everyone. Welcome to another episode of Just Press Lay. Really excited to uh, have our guests on the show today, uh, Kieran Monahan and Joe Shans. Um, guys, maybe just to start, uh, Kieran, maybe with you, just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and uh, your long and illustrious career. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks, Andrew. So um, basically, I think this is year 32 working in advertising and brand marketing. Um, started uh, back in London, where I'm from, and um, moved over, worked at a couple of the big agencies in London um, on a couple of like, big global brands. Um and like British Airways and Vodafone, which is Verizon in the US and PlayStation globally and that sort of thing. And then moved over to America about 10 years ago, um, had a little stop over in Amsterdam for three years. And that's where Joe and I met. Um, we worked together on Vodafone. We, I think we launched it in like 20 countries or something. The air miles were good, but the memories are a blur. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was at Wyden and Kennedy, an agency called Wyden and Kennedy. And we're both, you'll find out that we're both like very influenced by working at Wyden's, probably the best independent creative agency that has ever existed. And that's not an exaggeration. So, yeah, so here we are. And of course, you and I, we met a few years ago in the very early days of Bowie. And um, it's been amazing watching you guys build your brand for the last, you know, eight, nine years. So excited to have this conversation. No, oh, thanks, Kieran. Appreciate that background. And, and Joe, maybe you tell your slightly parallel and intersecting story with Kieran. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, I'll keep it short because both of our careers are very long and winding. Uh, started in Colin Weber in Portland, Oregon, where I helped bring uh, the, the idea of Doc Martin shoes to America and make those make everybody want to wear black shoes with yellow stitching around the edges uh, and went to Goodby and helped launch Got Milk, which is still uh, a campaign that's vibrant and uh, a, lo a very long running successful campaign. Launched the Porsche Boxster, did a lot of great things at Goodby in San Francisco. Went to Widening Kennedy in Portland, uh, was uh, creative director on Nike uh, and uh, just so many wonderful brands went to Amsterdam, worked with Kieran on Vodafone, where we worked with Michael Schumacher back in the day and help helping Vodafone, you know, be a big part of F1, which is just one of the world's great sports. Uh, we were very involved in F1 and the Ferrari brand. Uh, went to Shiat Day, ran Nissan globally, uh, you know, helped launch 16 new vehicles at the time and uh, worked with Pepsi, worked with uh, Visa. Uh, you know, uh, I've been mentored by Lee Clow, uh, Jeff Goodby, Rich Silverstein, Dan Wyden, um, RIP Dan, we, we love Dan, we miss Dan, uh, and David Kennedy. I had been lucky, very lucky to work with just the best of the best of the best and uh, humbly uh, they taught me everything and I, I am proud of, uh, to say that all those agencies have influenced me. And now we, hopefully Kieran and I are taking all of those influences and all those great people and those great teams. And we're putting that to good use at, at Wisdom and Instinct here in Austin, Texas. And so uh, it, it's just really just uh, the, our mentors are brilliant. And uh, without them, we would be, you know, I don't know, doing nothing, I guess. We, we, are, we, are, we owe it to them, all of our wisdom and all of our instinct. Well, uh, tell us a little bit more about Wisdom and Instinct and, you know, Kieran, maybe I'll start with you. Um... Yeah, we, we basically, uh, I mean, we always, we say, uh, and I'll give Joe total credit because he wrote this, but we say wisdom and instinct not sold separately. And um, to us, you, you know, great creative is built on really solid strategy and showing me a great strategy that wasn't very creative. Um, so, you know, you can't separate those two things out. So the wisdom is the strategic understanding of what, of why brands actually grow. Um, and the instinct is being able to make the creative leap so that you can come up with something where, you know, you are trying to communicate what you're trying to do with a brand. Like it's not your logo or your colors. It's what is the purpose of this brand? What is it doing for the world and for your customers? And how do you encapsulate that? And articulate that in a creative way that just gets people in the few seconds you've got to, you know, create, sort of gather their, their attention. Um, 
so that's kind of we've always you know we always say like we i'm kind of i'm the strategist and joe's a creative director but we always say like i'm 80 percent strategy and 20 percent creative and he's the other way around and we always work best with people who can who can do that um so we don't take on crazy on strategic business where we're not going to end up doing the creative and and we don't take on creative business where there's no there's no strategic input because we just won't do our best work so yeah that's kind of where it where it came from love that well maybe diving in then um you know we uh have a lot of you know first time entrepreneurs uh following the vlog and and uh, also just a lot of my colleagues I'm a first time entrepreneur and so you guys have worked with just some amazing companies very well established brands uh, can you give us a couple of takeaways you know on the strategic side but also on the creative side uh takeaways that you would kind of give to say a first time entrepreneur in teaching them about how to build a brand, you know, from both perspectives. And maybe Joe, uh, maybe I'll pass it to you first. Like, what do you think? Uh, well, you know, again, yes, we've worked with in, in brands that have, who inspire the human spirit. And so one of our missions at, uh, that Kieran and I really believe in and adhere to is that we get up every day and our goal is to inspire the human spirit. And so I would give the advice, and we do give the advice that to have a to uh, to uh, first time entrepreneurs is to have a clear mission written and approved by your entire team, paint it on the wall, make it personal, make it poetic. You know, this very first step is why people like want to join your company, want to join your cause. That's why they they tell their friends they run they run to tell their friends that they just got to work. Get, they got a job at this great company and it goes far beyond a paycheck. It's, it's, it's a mission based thing. It's a, it's a cause based thing. It's a, it's a greater good thing. So that, that sort of passion and compassion is incredible in, in the tech sector in, in tech category and healthcare and sports, you know, Nike always said, everybody is an athlete. And if you have, um, if you have physical issues, if you're, perhaps overweight, underweight, tall, short, thin, you, you're an athlete. You're an athlete if you say you're an athlete and you go and act accordingly in your world. If you run, if you just go for it. So that right there, that compassion and is, is something that, you know, uh, that, that mission that everybody is an athlete, that, that, that thing is why is and also be great marketers be proud of your brand your brand is we always tell people your brand is not just your logo or maybe a corporate color it's your voice it's uh it's sort of uh, you know it's sort of what you want to achieve so be great brand ambassadors put your dreams for your your company or your startup on display proudly for the world to see steve jobs was brilliant and he was brilliant also in the world of marketing um, so that, that, that's what we usually tell them to go out there and do something and always know that this is a human thing and just inspire the human spirit. That's beautiful, Joe. Do you mind if I ask you a follow-up question before I pass it over to Kieran? Um, Joe, when you talk about kind of the individual, um, like say like a Steve Jobs, you know, being brilliant at marketing, but also individuals you know, and entrepreneurs kind of like really talking about their brand and it's displaying that for everyone. Um, how do you think about building brand at the company level uh, versus at the individual level? Uh, like what's your, what's the thought process there? Um, one and the same is, is there a risk in that? Um, what's the strategy in, in kind of the separation of like who's doing the speaking when it comes to the brand? Well, I, you know, obviously it comes from on high and, and whoever is sort of, you know, inspiring and or began the company. But we always also absolutely believe that no brand can be amazing out in the world until it is has complete buy through, sell through. And there's a pride internally in sort internally in the company. Everybody in internally should be so proud of what they see going out into the world. They should never 
question it, they should be like, I, I, I love our messaging. I love our voice. Uh, when, if, if you were lucky, if you are lucky enough to have a uh, mass media on television at the Super Bowl, uh, you, your employees should be the first one that shushes the room. Stop, stop talking. Stop, stop, stop. Our commercials coming on, like be proud of the messaging. Like it's like you, you, own it like it's your personal message like you wrote it and so the individual is incredibly important and I, and 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 them like being and again brand ambassadors not just company ambassadors because what your mission is how you treat people uh, those things will filter into uh, into your overall brand it'll 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 be the D dna it'll be the foundation of it so you are fundamentally good. You're inspiring. Your mission is to go out and help others. That will, that comes from on high, but it also comes from the lowest person on the totem pole, as they say. So it comes from the bottom up and the top down. And uh, so build your brand internally and then let it go out into the world. And that's why we say, write that mission, paint it on the wall, make it poetic, make it something everybody sees when they walk in in the morning. Like, Wyden and Kennedy, we used to have this giant wall and somebody put it together with uh, clear little pins and uh, in the wall. So it was a, like a billion little stick pins that spelled out the words fail harder. And you sit there and you go, why would anybody in the world want to say to, to young people, to anyone to fail harder? And that is, that's because they wanted to inspire an atmosphere, an environment where there's no fear. You, you, the greatest, I, the greatest ideas come from knowing that you can present those. You can put that out in the in the lobby, and you can build a sculpture, whatever you think might help. And everybody's going to go, oh, "Are you crazy? What is that?" And that's okay. And sometimes your your ideas might go far too far, but no, but that that is the good thing. Uh, not the bad thing. The bad thing would be to, in, to inspire an environment where uh, people are afraid to go the extra mile to come up with the crazy idea that changes the world, to say what needs to be said in a meeting that might not be popular, but is honest and from their heart. And they feel like this is my brand and my company too. And I'm going to give you a great idea. And, and if, if you don't like it, that's okay. But encourage no fear. Yeah. I love that, Joe. Karen, uh, we'd love to get, get your take. What are some takeaways, you know, for an, uh, a first time entrepreneur in terms of building a brand? Yeah. I mean, I think as Joe was just saying there about, you know, it comes from on high. I mean, a brand needs like anything, it's an obvious statement, but it needs real leadership. Um, and I think there's like a dichotomy there because we think that, you know, great leaders are, there's a lot to be said for servant leadership. Um, it's like, you know, officers eat last, that sort of thing. But at the same time, it's like an organization is, it gets to a point where you can have, it's a democracy where you need, everyone needs to be heard. But at some point, a leader needs to make some decisions and say, we're going over there, who's coming with me, you need to inspire people. So it's like, you know, I like the way that Joe said it comes from on high. And I, I think it, it comes from on high, but it also, it comes from the heart. So the sort of the company and the individual is, if it's in their heart, and it's come from on high, you're on a, you've got a winning like little algorithm there for your brand um, because people can feel it. It's, you know, like my favorite quote, Maya Angelou is, you know, it's um, people, I learned people forget what you did and they forget what you said, but they'll never forget how they made you, how you made them feel. And that ultimately is really what a brand, you know, is about. Um, I mean, I've got a couple of other little things um, just building on what Joe had said. And your question is, um, you know, a mission and a purpose of a brand needs to be really poetic. Otherwise, you know, we're all human beings. People aren't going to buy into it unless they feel it. But it also should be more from a sort of, you know, strategic measurement side. It should be tangible and it should be measurable. So when we say we exist to, to inspire the human spirit, I mean, we can measure that in terms of, you know, even if it's as simple as something like we do a marketing campaign for a, a client and we do a pre and post measurement you know survey we can see how it's working that you know is your is your brand affecting your nps score you know that sort of thing there's all sorts of ways that you can measure that um and if you look at um something like apple which we talk about because everyone's familiar with the brand but 
you know, their purpose was to um, make technology easy to use for the everyman. Well, that's incredibly ambitious and it's very, it is very poetic, but it's also easy to measure. You know, are you making it easy to use for most people? Um, you know, so you can deliver that back to, you know, ultimately it comes to, you know, stakeholders and shareholders and investors, and you need to be able to give them some sort of metrics that the, the, the big emotional things, truly big emotional things have a measurable outcome. And fluffy brand stuff that might sound really intellectual on a PowerPoint slide and designed really beautifully can't be measured. And it's not, it's, it's, it's useless. It's not, there is no value in it. So um, I think another thing we, we talk a lot, a lot about is, um, is, is being organic. And by that, what we mean is, you know, perfection is the enemy of the entrepreneur. It's, you know, it's, it's like, don't try and perfect it from day one, like feel your way. Um, definitely, you know, get help. Don't never be afraid to ask for help. As Joe said, fail harder every day. Um, and, and, and never stop doing that until, you know, well, until the last day, probably, but just like be organic. Don't worry about it. Just like get on with it. Trust your instinct. That's what we always say to people at the end of the day is trust your instinct. If you've got a great team together, you'll be able to pretty much achieve anything. Trust your instinct and, you know, and kind of get there. Um, and then my other quick thing on brand would be, um, invest in design early, invest in design and, and people who can, you know, a, a designer and a writer early, however you find them, maybe they're on staff, maybe they're not, maybe they're like contracting or whatever, but not only from the look and feel of things, but like developing your voice and even down to your voice should be affecting how your, you know, like your UI and your UX are working. And you know, um, the, the, sorry to interrupt, Kieran, but to that end, we've got to give a shout out, and Kieran can jump in on this too. We got to give a shout out to our local team. You know, the Austin FC uh, uh, really invested early, early on in design. To Kieran's point, in their in this beautiful uh, uh, logo, in this in the in the in these colors that are are in, uh, that that are consistent and beautiful, and then the design of their or uh, uniforms and then that all fed into the architecture and the design of their stadium and i will tell you if you go to austin f see an austin fc match um it is phenomenal it how is mind -blowing. beautiful and how welcoming and how you feel like a family the minute you walk into the uh, uh stadium or arena and and uh, mm -hmm. so anyway uh they invested in design early and it's and it's paid dividends i mean uh, you just can't get a ticket to an Austin FC match, but uh, and we and we welcome everyone to Austin to uh, to to uh, see our Austin FC team play. They're they're actually really good. Sorry, so, in, interrupted. so invest in design, invest in copy, invest in developing your voice. Kieran, I thought another one of your takeaways I've never heard before. It was so fascinating. Was like have a mission statement. In, in other words, have like a brand that you can measure. And that's, I think that's such a fascinating takeaway because most of the time when you, you know, when people talk about brand, they, they talk about it in a very, like, it's a soft thing. It's very qualitative, you know, versus yeah. quantitative. And so, um, but that's a really good point. Um, and I'm like reflecting a little bit about our, you know, stated mission statement, you know, uh, which is really like to be the best way to get better. I'm like, we can measure that. Um, yeah. And yeah. It's, I cool. mean. Yeah, the quality, the qualitative and the quantitative, like they have to go hand in hand. I yeah. mean, you know, the people buy things and they make we make decisions. We all think that we're like these really smart, rational things, and we're not. We're very emotional animals and we make decisions based on emotion, and that is qualitative. But marketing and brand, you know, it's not a dirty word. It's really like marketing is get out there and tell people what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to do to make the world a bit better for them. And that's what marketing is. It, it's really hard to do it well because you have so little time to say anything or show anything, but that's, you know, that's where the expertise needs to come in. But ultimately the emotions that you're generating in your marketing and with your brand, they need to, there's only one thing you're looking to do and that's a behavior change. And you, you can measure a behavior change. So and I think that I always say I'm allergic to brand fluff and th th there, there is a lot of it out there and it's hard. It's a, it's a hard thing to come up with something that is both deeply emotional, but clearly tangible and therefore measurable. 
Um, but it, you know, it can be done. And that's what great brands do. That's what we see, you know, great brands do. And like when there's a great scene in um Mad Men, if you've ever seen that show and about Madison Avenue and and Don, I remember that struck me so strongly. Um, one episode, Don Draper, they've got a, a car account like Chevy or something like that. And Don Draper's the creative director, and they're talking about a problem, and he just says, How many cars are they selling? And it was like the creative director is asking someone to quantify, is our marketing working for our client? So, you know, Joe and I have the same sorts of discussions and he will be very poetic in the way he writes. And that's kind of, that's the creative leap when that's the instinct, but he'll also just go, okay, well, give me some insight into these people. Like, what do they want to do? Like, is this working? Are we getting more people to the website? That sort of stuff. And you have to love both sides of that equation, you know, otherwise you're in the, you're not in the right business. I love that. I know we only have a few minutes left. I feel like I could talk to you guys for hours. We should <laughs> maybe do a, a, another episode, but um, maybe turning to our industry specifically, uh, I think I remember I saw some uh, study looking at some of the top brands in healthcare and found like their penetration was relatively low. Right. Uh, and kind of like the 30% range. And I, I don't want to name names. And I know Bowie is still, we're still in the, you know, in our journey of kind of building a brand. Um, taking everything that you've learned from so many other industries and then looking at the healthcare ecosystem specifically, where do you see areas of opportunity for brand innovation um, or brand positioning? Uh, strategically, creatively, uh, just would love your take um, on, on sure. about brand building within healthcare. Sure. Well, let me, let me just off that one. I mean, when we just before we were we were talking just before we got into this call about this sort of thing, and there, there were three things that jumped out to me. Um, and having done quite a lot of work in healthcare as well, and the three things were, um, I'm not sure they're around innovation, but certainly around a brand in healthcare is there is a big issue with you know with trust in the just the system, not in the necessarily the providers, but in the system. And so transparency is something that is just so critical in dealing with, and we always like to say when we're talking about healthcare, like it's people, not patients. And of course they are patients. We all need to be a patient, but it's, you know, it's, it's about human beings. And so it's about being transparent to build trust because trust is the, is, is, is the most basic of all attributes of a brand that has to build. You've got no trust. You, you are nowhere. Um, the other thing is just, and we've probably already covered this a little bit, but it's like, just be human. Like, you know, patients are people first and then they go to the hospital, see the doctor, you know, it's, it's treat them like you're talking to a member of your family that you really care about their healthcare and just find ways of doing that. And then the other thing um, is, and we know it's a big theme in healthcare is, is, is you've got to show compassion. And it's interesting, you know, for an entrepreneur and a startup where you're trying to scale your business. So you're trying to, you have to scale with numbers but you can't treat people like a number because that's how they already feel at the moment. So it's how do you generate that compassion? And if you can do that, then that's the thing that's going to lead to the scaling. Because if you can get people to feel like you're honest, you're open with them and you're compassionate, then that's what's going to start, you know, attracting people. I mean, the way that a brand grows is through penetration. Ultimately, if you, if you're not penetrating a market, you can only grow at the speed that you can penetrate at. I mean, you can get it wrong and grow slower than you should be, but you know, you have to get penetration and it's, it's hard. It's really hard and it's expensive too. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And I would add that, that categories tend to, to, to their detriment sometimes play best practice. They follow each other. And at Shiat, you know, we had something called disruption and, and we, Kieran and I, uh, we, we have a philosophy called the Veer philosophy. Sometimes we will put that worksheet and, and day of discussion in front, uh, in front of a creative process to, to go, I mean, look at health, look at insurance. There was a point where insurance was incredibly conservative, that, that sector, that category. And then the first company that, that boldly went and, 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 interjected comedy or, or some sense of 
So is every, cause everybody's selling the same thing in insurance and, you know, and so when they interjected this sense of comedy or storytelling or, you know, letting people see, uh, putting a mirror up that people do run into cars in front of them, there, there's chaos in the world. Sometimes a wedding can be ruined and sometimes things happen. So that, that chaos, when they put that to a character, when they made that a dynamic thing, people started remembering who they were. They started talking about them at the we call it at the water, at the water cooler, at the coffee, uh, uh, coffee cup, you know, where you get your coffee in the morning, everybody started saying, Oh, did you see that? Those, those things. So then now everybody in insurance now is going is, is comedic now. And they're, and now we're suddenly back to a category best practice since, uh, slash no one's really standing out again. Um, in healthcare, I think you, you, you have to look at healthcare the same way, like that, that human side of, connecting with people that make make it human make it make me feel something um be uh be disruptive not in a bad way because again like karen said earlier it's not a bad word to disrupt it's it's a way of using what you believe in to make yourself stand out in the world and if your agency uh is a good partner uh to you then they will they will embrace who you are and what you have to offer and why you started your, your company in the first place. And they'll take all that passion and they'll put it into a, something that is a, a break from the normal voice of everyone around you so that your, your DNA is put on display in a way that's, that people will remember because it's not like everybody else's. And, and so, so, uh, you know, it's scary. Uh, from a marketing and branding perspective, it's absolutely scary. You have to trust your instincts. You have to trust your wisdom. You have to trust that your team's smart and our team's smart and that we're all trying to get you market share. And, and then and we'll measure all that, of course, as we go. But, but don't worry about the measuring in the very beginning. Just, just, just make it something that's unique and fascinating or funny or emotional and then go for it. And let's, because you're not going to, you're, you're never going to be allowed, if we're your agency or anyone else, to, to make a massive misstep. You're going to be in good hands, and, you're, and, and you also have great instincts as well. So trust them, and then, then, then break it. Break it open. Like, let people remember you because, like, wow, I've never seen something that approached it that way um, in, the, this, in this category. And then you're on, off to the races. I love that. I love this idea of like the veer and I love the, in many ways, you know, you're, you're saying Joe, like there's this like intrinsic fear of being original, being yourself, testing your instrument. Right. Yeah. It's incredibly um, fearful. I mean, if you have a board and they're saying, well, everybody's making it, uh, you know, like green, and then you're going out there and doing something that's blue, uh, Sometimes it's even like green versus blue green. Like sometimes <laughs> people are incredibly like scared of like breaking from it. Again, I'll go back to insurance, that category. Like, like everybody remembers the days when it was just this something that was only on golf and it was very serious. And now the most entertaining Geico, the Geico gecko uh, chaos. I mean, the best commercials on the Super Bowl are usually from insurance companies, which are incredibly, you know, uh, 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 conservative and but, you know, bless them for for going out there and, and saying, like, we have a personality and we care about the human lives that we that we that we ensure and so uh, and and making people just smile. I, I can't tell you how many conversations I am in advertising. So people like to say to me, "Hey, did you see that ad?" And mm -hmm. they're always asking me what I think about it. And and, and I usually I they get me talking when they talk about certain companies that really break from the norm. Nice. Well, this has been uh, a packed half hour and I've fun. <laughs> Uh, Kieran and Joe, thank you so much. And um, we uh, really look forward to having you guys back on the on the on the vlog because this was yeah. so full of just amazing. We'd love to. Um, thank you both. Thanks very yeah. much for having us, man. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thanks everyone for watching this episode of Just Press Lay. <laughs>